In this video, we will take a look at the collision handling method called linear probing. So, how does linear probing work? When a collision occurs, that is, two distinct keys are mapped to the same hash value. In such a case, the colliding element will be placed in the next circularly available table cell. So let's see what I mean by this using an example. Let me say my hash function is going to be x mod 10. Let me say that my elements are going to be or my keys are going to be 18, 41, 22, 32, 44, 59 and 79. So if these are going to be my keys, what are going to be my hash values? My hash value of 18 is going to be 8, of 41 is going to be 1, 2, 2, 4, 9, 9, respectively. So now let's take a look at our bucket array and see how we are going to fill in these keys into the bucket array. So my capital N here is going to be 10 because that is going to be the range in which I am compressing. So my bucket array will have the indexes 0 to 9. So now, where do I place these keys? I place each key in the index which is equal to their hash value. So let's start at 18. 18 will be placed at index 8. 41 will be placed at index 1. 22 will be placed at index 2. So far it has been fairly easy because we are just going to place the key in the index of its hash value. Now we are going to come to a collision case. 32. 32 mod 10 is equal to 32 which is, is equal to 2. But when we go to the index 2, this index has already been filled. So I need to check the next index. Is the next index free? Yes, the next index is free. So I can store 32 here. Now I have 44. 44 can be stored in index number 4. Then I have 59. 59 can be stored in index 9. Now I have 79. 79 mod 10 is equal to 9, but there is no space at an index 9. So we go to the next circularly available table cell. So the next circularly available table cell after 9 is going to be 0. 0 is free, so I am going to insert 79 here. This is how linear probing is going to work. Let's take a small other example. Let's say I want to add 33 to this. So the hash value of 33 is going to be 3, but the index 3 is going to be full. So we will go to index 4. Index 4 is also full, so we will go to index 5. And 33 is going to be added here. That's just for a supplementary example. So, with this algorithm in mind, let's try writing the pseudocode for inserting an element. So, I want to insert some key. So, the first thing we do is, we are going to calculate the hash code or the hash value of key. Let me store that in a variable h. So, h is equal to the hash value of key. Now, what I want to see is where I am going to place this key. 
it could either be at the index h or it could be at an index somewhere different from h provided that h is not empty. So let's keep an incrementing variable i equal to 0. So now we need to run a while loop while h plus i mod n the, this index right so this gives us some kind of index while this index is not empty we'll want to go to the next index and so check whether that is empty so while this index is not empty I'm going to go to the next index I'm going to do i plus plus So let's take an example when we were adding 32. So our hash value of 32 is going to equal to 2. So h is equal to 2. Now 2 plus 0 mod 9 is equal to 2. Now that value, that index is not empty. So we have to increment i. So now we say 2 plus 1 which is 3. That at that point of time was empty. So we could add 32 to this index so we keep traversing the array until we find an empty slot and then we will add the element to that slot so i is going to tell us how much we need to jump from our initial hash value now there can be a case that the hash table has become full so what do we do then then we go to one of our hash value indexes we keep incrementing i and finally when we traverse n elements of the array, we know that n elements of these, this array is not going to be empty. In such a case, we say that the hash table is full because none of the n elements are empty. And then we say that there is no possibility for us to add another element and we return from there. So we want to increment i only as long as, so this should be not empty. And the next condition is and i should be less than n so as long as we are traversing elements under n elements we can keep incrementing i the minute we reach n elements we know that all the n elements are not empty and so this hash table is full so we shouldn't be adding to it so let's come to the next part so after the while loop either the hash table has been empty so we come out of, has been full so we come out of the while loop or we have found the empty index at which we want to add so let's say if it is full the hash table then return but else what do we say if it's not full we'll want to add the key into the index h plus i mod n because that's going to be the first empty index which we find else add key to array of h plus i mod n so this is going to be the pseudo code for inserting a key into the hash table when you write your code, the implementation can differ, but the basic logic has to stay the same. So now that we have understood how to insert a key into the hash table, let's see how we are going to search for a key in the hash table. So I want to search for a key. First, I will get h like I did in the insert operation as hash value or the hash function of key h is going to represent my hash value now i will go to the index of the hash value and i will search from that index and then the next index and then the next index until either i find my key or i'm going to encounter a space so let's say i'm going to search for 32 so 32 mod 10 is equal to 2 so I will search start from 2 
I will check the value at 2. The value at 2 is not equal to 32. So I'll go to the next index. I'll check the value at 3. The value at 3 is not equal is equal to 32. So I will say it's found. Now, what if we are searching for something which does not exist? Suppose I'm searching for 42. In that case, right, suppose I'm searching for 42. In that case, I will go to 42 mod 10, which is 2. I will search at 2. 22 is not equal to 42. I'll go to the next index. 32 is not equal to 42. I'll go to the next index. 44 is not equal to 42. I'll go to the next index. Assuming we didn't do this variation, fifth index is going to be empty. At this point, if I reach an empty index without finding my um, key or finding the element I'm searching for, then I can say that that element is not going to be in this bucket array. Another case when I have not found my element is when the bucket array is full and I have traversed all n elements and none of the n elements are going to equal to my key. That is another case in which the key is not found. So let's start searching. So let's keep a counter i equal to 0. So now we say while h plus i mod n that this index is empty sorry is not empty while this is not empty I want to keep searching as soon as I know it's empty I'll say that it's not found and i is going to be less than n. So as long as i is less than n, then I know that I have not traversed all the elements. The minute i becomes n, I know I've traversed all the elements and none of these elements are going to equal to my key. So this is going to be my condition. So while this condition holds, I want to check if array of h plus i mod n, if this is going to equal to my key. If this is true, then I'm going to return true. That yes, I have found my key. So this means it's found. If you want to return the index at which it was found, you have to return h plus i mod n. Now, if that is not going to equal to my key, I will check the next index, i plus plus. So I will keep checking the next index and the next index until either I have traversed n elements or I have found that I have reached an empty space. When I have reached an empty space and still not found my key, then I can say that my key is not present in this bucket array. So once I come out of the while loop, I know for a fact that it is not going to be found and I can return false. This is how the searching operation will take place in linear probing. Now we come to deletions. Deletions are fairly easy because we are going to search for the element we want to delete. We'll get the index at which we want to delete it and then we just have to replace. Say I want to delete 32, I'll search for 32, I will get 3. I just have to replace 32 with some null value. Now you shouldn't make this square empty because let's say I was searching for 33 and I've already deleted 32. So I've deleted 32 from here. Now I'm going to search for 33. When I search for 33, which is currently present at index 5, then I'll go to x mod 10, which is 3. Then I'll see that 3 is an empty space. Now as soon as it's an empty space, I say it's not found. So I don't want to replace a deleted element with an empty space. Instead, I will replace it with a marker, say KA or key available. So whenever I reach this position, I know that it's not going to be empty. There is a marker here saying that 33 can be placed somewhere beyond this and it's not going to be empty. So for deletion, 
the pseudo code is very easy but the only thing you need to remember is replace the element with some kind of marker say something like key available in that way we will not stop searching for the element when we have deleted some element from that particular keys um, index so we have seen linear probing how to insert how to search and how to delete in linear probing